If you tent camp and if you're keen to improve the functionality of that tent, then keep watching this video because I'm going to share three modifications that I've made to my Hilleberg Sulo that I actually think anybody could consider making to any tent regardless of the brand or version number. So if that sounds like you, keep watching. Before I crack on putting this tent up and showing you these modifications I've made, I want to share with you really quickly whereabouts I am this evening. I'm camping at the side of a lake, as you can see there, called Clin Bocklewid. Clin Bocklewid is in the Ogwin Valley of the Snowdonia National Park in North Wales. The route you can see, you can see behind me there, I don't know where my finger is, that's the point where I kind of entered the lake system here. Looking roughly behind me now, we, we would have Trafan. We'd then have a sweep around a little more. We've had Glitter Vac and Glitter Vower, the Glitter Eye. And if I spin right round and tilt the camera up, there's a great scramble there called Gribbin or the Gribbin Ridge, the Gribbin Spur there. None of which you can see, <laughs> none of which you can see at all because the cloud system is so low. I just was kind of wanted to give you a sense that I'm at this lake and on on three sides of the lake, if, if not three and a half sides of the lake, I've got a nice high ground around me, so it feels quite sheltered here. I won't say there's no wind, but there's hardly a breath of wind. It's very, very calm, very still. Not entirely sure if that's because the wind has dropped generally, or because I'm being afforded some protection by this bowl that I'm in. But either way, it looks like a damn good spot to camp for this evening. So without further ado, let me throw this tent up, let me get some scran on, and I'll show you these modifications I've made. As you can tell from my change of outer jacket, the temperature's dropped a little bit now, certainly since I've stopped walking and putting the tent up and I'm a, a little bit more sedate, definitely feeling the cold a little more. Let's look at this first hack or modification that I've made. Now this is definitely, definitely, definitely one in principle that you can apply to any tent. I first came up with it, or first became aware of this a couple of weeks ago on Facebook where somebody else who had a Hilleberg Sulu was complaining about water ingress and he did a bit of investigation and actually found that it seemed like that there was some sort of design or manufacturing flaw or finishing um, flaw because there was, a, there was a hole, you could see through the hole. I wouldn't say it was pinprick size, but it definitely wasn't pencil lead size, it was somewhere in between and you could actually see daylight through it and it was at exactly the point where driving rain as it ran across the surface of the tent was likely to come in. So let me just give you a close look where I'm talking about specifically. Anybody who's got a Hilleberg Sula will be familiar with this area here, it's that triangular material section that you can zip and unzip to increase or decrease the airflow to reduce condensation and so on. If you follow that zip down and get to the end you can notice what looks like a, a dollop of body fluids. I can assure you it isn't as much as I love this tent, this isn't a dollop of body fluids, what it actually is is a dollop of seam sealant because this guy's video on Facebook showed that water was leaking through there after being driven across the surface of the waterproof zip or water resistant zip. So I just added a dollop of seam sealant on the inside and the outside that you can see now allowed it to dry and then just double checked that it had actually covered that area. So my first tack, my first tip that you can apply to any tent is if you've already seam sealed it brilliant, go back, look at it again, see if there's any areas, particularly where the stitching starts or finishes, as in the case of this zip, that might need a little bit of extra TLC. And if you haven't yet seam sealed your tent, now's probably a good time to do that. Tip number two. On Hilleberg's own sites, they recommend that for maximum stability of the tent, when pegging it out, when staking it out, that those pegs go into the ground as far as possible from the tent itself, which, which makes absolute sense. What doesn't make sense is then, why are those pre-tied loops from the factory, from Hilleberg, big enough to actually step through. <laughs> you could, I can actually, I'm so slim I could step through the loops, they're that big. So what I did was I just untied them at home, made them smaller, made them probably thumb thickness, maybe two thumb thicknesses, just enough to be able to get a tent peg or different size tent pegs through and then close the loop. That gave me probably another, I would say, six to nine inches worth of cordage that I could run out further from 
the tent. So if you have got a Hilleberg Sula or indeed any tent, just have a look at those guy lines. Are the loops that are pre-tied in the end for your tent peg to go through massive, in which case you're just reducing the, the ability to stabilize your tent even more. Reduce the size of that loop, make them just about big enough for a tent peg or a tent stake to go through and then close that loop off again. Tip number three, modification number three, hack number three, whatever you want to call it. I don't think there's a Hilleberg Sulu owner alive and possibly other Hilleberg tents, if social media is anything to go by, that hasn't set their tent up in high winds and woken up the next morning loathing whoever designed the zips because the zips are incredibly noisy. Now I mentioned earlier on in the video that there's hardly a breath of wind here tonight. I'm kind of pleased about that. I'm also a little bit disappointed as well because this third hack that I'd like to share with you is something that is designed to reduce the, the jingly jangliness of the zips. Now I'm just bringing up on screen now um, some footage where you can see just how noisy the zips are. Not necessarily when the zips bang against each other, but when the zip puller bangs against the, the, the base of the zip itself. It's incredibly noisy. Just listen to this. Now I've read many people online where they've cut the puller of the zip off completely and tied some cordage onto there. And I was a gnat's hair away from actually doing that until I read that A, it, it invalidates the warranty, which I kind of understand, but B, it can actually long-term damage the zip itself because when you're pulling the cordage, you're not pulling the zip in the natural direction that it wants to go. You're kind of pulling it out slightly. I hope that makes sense. Whereas when you're using the zip puller, zip, be, be pulling something down or pulling it up, that zip puller, as you know, rotates to 180 degrees. So it pulls in line with the zip material itself and replacing with cordage stops that. So I spotted somebody online, a post from years ago, had actually come up with, with quite an obvious, but quite an ingenious solution to that. And that's what I want to share with you now. You'll notice here that the zip and the zip puller, the metalware if you like, is still in place. I haven't made any changes or modifications to it at all. But what I have done is I've just looped some two mil high visibility cordage in a specific way around the zip. I'll bring up a still image on the screen so you can actually see what that looks like without the camera moving around. If you want to copy it at home, you can pause the video now and copy that. And now I can still pull the zip either by the zip puller or by the cordage. When I pull it, it still runs in the direction of the zip. So it's not pulling the zip outwards, it's pulling in line with the zip. But actually, again, if you look on screen now, I'm bringing up some footage that I shot at home after I'd added this additional cordage to every single zip. And believe me, there's more of them than you, than you might imagine on a Hilleberg Sulu. Just listen to the difference between the two. If you're the sort of person that enjoys making modifications to their gear and in particular their tents then check out a video that's appearing on the screen right now that I recorded earlier this year that talks about how I've modded the base of the tent to enable it to be more flexible in how it's pegged out and where it's pegged out. Why not check that out? 